are broadcasting from the semi up here in Montreal, Quebec. So welcome to the Ho-Ho Show, ladies and gentlemen, and as always, I am your host, Ho-Ho, and you guys can head on over to thehohoshow.com to just check out all the information that I have available on there. So yeah, guys, as I said at the beginning of the show, I am broadcasting in Quebec, Montreal, well, not Montreal, but I don't even know what town I'm around. You know, I, I really have no idea, but... I am up here in Quebec, Canada, and guys, so I guess what happened was, I would have made it back like Sunday night, you know, granted, either way I looked at it, I wouldn't have had a show today because, you know, I would have been at least on my commute back home, but unfortunately due to circumstances outside of my control, which I think, to be honest, it was wind-related, that's right guys, wind-related, because You know, the four-wheelers were able to go across the bridge that I needed to go across in order to get to Beacon Core, which is where I was going. But unfortunately, all the semi-traffic, all of the, you know, uh, trailer traffic in general, they were kicking off the highway. And I mean, dude, there was a bunch of us that was stacked on the shoulder, you know, on the exit ramp and whatnot. People were turning around. Um, But, you know, now there was a go-around but the, the go-around t- took me out like two additional hours out of my way, which, in all honesty, in, in able to get there before they closed on Friday, going around just was not an option. I mean, I had to go through it. And man, I, I tell you what, it was, oh, it was, it was frustrating because, you know, I, I got kicked off the interstate like 30 minutes before I got to where I was going. So... I mean, definitely frustrating, but, you know, I mean, hey, it happens. You know, I guess it's just that time of the year, it happens. I had rain, like, all week. At least I didn't have any of that white stuff, so I was pretty happy about that. But, even still, I got booted off because of wind. Or at least that's what my assumption is. I really don't know. Um, They weren't telling us what was going on. They were just more or less kicking us off and wouldn't let us go across the bridge. And since I don't have a CB hooked up, I really didn't have that ability to verify. And I wasn't jumping out of the truck and talking to some of the other drivers because, well, let's just face it, most of them speak French up here. And I don't speak French. I mean, I don't speak French at all. So, I mean, communicating up here, I mean, yes, it's still North America, but up in Quebec, they primarily speak French. All the signs are in French. Menus are in French. Everything's in French, 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 French. I don't speak French. Dude, I was I was at one of these places. Um, actually, I might have been up in Beaconcore. And it was funny because... Now, the, the, the frustrating is a lot of these guys do speak English. A lot of them do. You know, but to, you know, foreigners like me, they speak French to us. They're like, hey, you know, if you're going to come up here, you're going to speak our language. And, and of which case, I understand that mindset. You know, I'm the same way with... <clears throat> you know, whatever. I understand the mindset. I really do. I very much understand that mindset. But this one time I was coming up here and I started speaking Spanish to him, you know, and the guy was like, what? I'm like, hey, you're speaking to me in, in French, a language I don't understand. I'm going to speak to you in Spanish, a language you don't understand. I figured at least this way, none of us understand each other. It's a good way to start off a conversation. The guy just started laughing at me. He's like, all right, touche. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it was, oh, it cracked me up. I had fun with it. You know, you got to have fun with it. You know, there's no reason in getting frustrated about it. It is what it is. But yeah, I figured I'd have fun with it. So here I am stuck up here in Canada. And so I've got a an awesome show that I got planned out for whenever I get back. And it's it's Remember, Remember the 5th of November. That's going to be the title of it. If you guys, you know, have ever seen the movie V for Vendetta, okay, it's an awesome movie, definitely recommend it, and there's a there's an aspect of that movie that, if you've never watched it, I, I recommend checking it out, you know, um, or at least going on YouTube and checking out, you know, V's speech, I guess, I don't know how else to really search it, I think you can find it that way, and check out his speech, Check out what he was talking about, you know, whenever he was at the, uh, um, whatever place that he was at where he put in the video and played the speech. But definitely recommend checking the speech. 
And beyond that, I would also actually recommend watching a documentary on the gunpowder treason. Okay. And I only recommend these because that show is going to be based off of kind of sort of and focused on both of those things. Okay. So, you know, that's like an hour worth of homework before the show. And I should be doing the show on, I think, Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's when I'm going to be getting back. Maybe Thursday. Thursday, whenever I'll be doing the show. Yeah, we'll go with that. Thursday is when I'm going to be doing the show. And, you know, so there's your homework. There's your homework. Check out those two things. uh, The speech and the documentary on the gunpowder treason. And just check those out, you know, because... There's some definite pause that the the government needs to be taking in what they're doing to President Trump and, in turn, the American people. Okay, there, there really is. You know, they... See, because here's the thing, guys, okay, and you, you guys know me. I am a, you know, a constitutional conservative. I am, I, I lean more libertarian. I am an individual patriot. I believe... In our founding documents, I believe just what this country was founded upon, the ideals and the principles, okay? I believe in that. I believe in these wholeheartedly. And I also see how the, you know, those that have been put in power have really gone above and beyond by just limiting our freedom, removing our freedom. I mean, think about it, guys, like, you know, back in the day. Did you have to have a fishing license? Did you have to go out and get a marriage license? No. Only in America do you have to buy back your freedom from government. There's just something wrong with that, you know. They've been taking away our freedom bit by bit, piece by piece, for a very long time, you know. I believe in a flat tax. Not a graduated tax, a flat tax. You know, I don't even think as a married couple, you should get a tax, you know, a tax cut, you know, because it's equal representation under the law and equal um, protection under the law. How is that equal representation if as a single person, I'm paying a different amount in taxes as as a married person is? That's not equal representation. That's not equal representation at all. That's not equal protection. Because I'm getting robbed from my heart and running more than I would be if those circumstances were different. So I believe in that, a, a flat tax. You know, so th- there's just some things that our federal government needs to wake up to and warm up to. And one of those key foundational things is it is we the people whom are the drivers of our country because the care of the country was put into our hands not in theirs in ours it is uh, up to us to elect our leaders which aren't leaders they are our representatives it's, they're not our leaders you know they're our representatives it's us to it's up to us to elect them in the office we're the ones who give them the i don't want to say the power Because, quite frankly, they don't have the power. It's our power. They're supposed to represent us. It's our power. They are supposed to be an echo of our voice. They're not necessarily supposed to have their own voice. They're to echo ours. To an extent, you know, to an extent, you know, of course, do we elect people because of who they are or whatever in order to get them into office and, and, you know, vote on these different things so that this way we don't need to pay as much attention. But that's the problem, isn't it, guys? Isn't that the problem? Because we have neglected our duty to pay attention to politics, pay attention to government, pay attention to what's been going on. We've ignored that. We've ignored our duty. You know, we have totally, unequivocally ignored our duty. That's what we're supposed to be doing, though. You know, we're supposed to be keeping track of things. We're supposed to be making our representatives beholden to us we're supposed to hold them accountable for what they do you know and and i've brought this up in the past you know the whole 2012 election you know whenever 
you know, they did a poll two weeks before election and, and it was like 96%, 94% of the, of, of the people that were polled were unhappy with the job that Congress was doing. And then two weeks later, when it was time for the election, over 90% of these people got elected back into office. It's like, how is that even possible? How can over 90% of the population vote or say that they're unhappy with the job Congress is doing, but yet 90% of these people make it back into office? How is that even possible? I mean, the problem is, and our founding fathers had warned us against this, and that's party politics. Because people don't think about who it is they're voting for. All they do is look for the D. They look for the R. They look for their party affiliation, and that's it. That's all they look for. That's, they don't go any farther than that. And so we have people in office that have been serving, and I use that term loosely, for 50 years. I mean, they're going to blame, blame President Trump for our problems. They're going to blame President Obama for our problems. Like, dude, they, they were only in office for, you know, uh, Obama for eight years. How are you going to blame Obama and not blame somebody like Nancy Pelosi, who's been in office longer than I've been alive? It's like, really? It, and I mean, you, you look at some of the stuff that is plaguing our society and it's like, dude, we, we've had these problems for years. You know, the the immigration, you know, they, they've been saying for the longest time that immigration is a problem. But yet, all they want to talk about is amnesty. Amnesty this, amnesty that. That's all they want to talk about as far as as far as the left is concerned. Amnesty. Well, if immigration's a problem, why don't we fix the problem? You know, let's quit talking about amnesty and let's get something on the, you know, on the books to fix immigration. It's like if if immigration's a problem, let's fix it. Let's not talk about amnesty anymore. Let's talk about the problem. You know, people jumping across the borders and then crying for amnesty, well that's just a symptom of the problem, but that's not the problem. Let's fix the problem. That's the problem that I have with politics. I hate politics. I'll be honest with you guys. I absolutely despise politics. Oh, yeah. I can't stand politics. Because it ain't about right and wrong. And that's my problem with politics. It ain't about right and wrong. It's about whose back is scratching whose. Whose money is being represented in these different politicians. That's all it's about. It ain't about right and wrong. It ain't about what they're supposed to do. It ain't about what they should be doing. It ain't about, you know, the people. It's about whose back is scratching whose. And how do you scratch somebody's back? Well, you donate money to them. That's how you do it. And that's why they are totally afraid of President Trump. Because, I mean, if you guys remember, only at the, you know, towards the end of his election... Did he really accept campaign contributions? Now, this is according to him, but yet, even still, a lot of this information can be found out, you know, because it's part of public record. You know, they have to disclose that information. So you can look it up. But he's he wasn't in anybody's pocket. He didn't have to answer to anybody. Only thing that he had to answer to was the American people. Why do you think... He's followed through with so many of his campaign promises, so many of the promises that he made on the campaign trail that most of these other people before him, up to and including former President Ronald Reagan, has even campaigned upon, like, you know, moving the Jerusalem embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. I'm sorry, the Israeli um, uh, thing, you know, moving it from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They've all campaigned on the same thing. President Trump is the only one that did the follow through and actually did it. Why? Because the money, the people that scratched the president, the president's back said, no, that's not what we want you to do. But he wasn't beholden to those people. He said, hey, I campaigned on it. I told the American people that's what I was going to do, so I'm going to do it. And he followed through with it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he followed through with it. So guys, that's, uh, you know, I guess that's really all I got on this one. You know, short show, very short show. 
And uh, thank you to Mr. Dave Canyon, who actually, you know, and, and I don't know why I didn't think about this, but yeah, he gave me the idea to go ahead and do a show. You know, just because you're not in the studio, just because you can't do video, doesn't mean you can't do a show, because Spreaker has this amazing app that you can use, which is what I'm using now. So guys, thank you very much for listening. Thank you for checking it out. Listen in to the next show I will, you know, post on my social media platforms when I'm going to be doing that show. Tentatively, I'm going to say Thursday night. Um, oh, wait, no, I can't do it Thursday night because Brandon Gatton of the Machine Radio Show will be doing a show then. So uh, let's say I'll do that on Friday night and then I'll do the regular show, not on Sunday or Saturday because I will be taking off Saturday to head back up to Canada. Got to go to Western Canada. So let, let's just say Friday night or Saturday night. No, Friday night. Yeah, Friday night. We'll say Friday night. I'll be doing the show. So, guys, I thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you to Mr. Dave Canyon. You're an amazing man. And I appreciate you all checking me out and listening. Uh, head over to the website, thehohoshow.com. Check out everything in there. There's a lot of stuff on there. Well, guys, you all have yourself a wonderful evening. Good night. Sleep tight. And if the bed bugs bite them, by golly, bite them back. Take care, all. <laughs>